Hey guys, and welcome back to another Unfiltered Gamer review and walkthrough for the game Into the Dead by PickPock. Now, this is a game that was originally based off of an application on your phone, and you can still go ahead and check them out. It's Into the Dead and Into the Dead 2. I actually went ahead and played a little bit of both of them before giving this uh, game a review and learning how it's played. So, I'm going to go ahead and show you a little bit of footage right now regarding into the dead and show you what the game's gonna feel like if you were to be playing that in comparison to the board game. Okay, so now that I've given you a little taste of the mobile app game Into the Dead, let's talk about the board game. Into the Dead, the board game, is for two to four players, takes about 45 to 60 minutes to play, and is for ages, I'd say, about 13 and up. You're basically going to be playing as a survivor who has been stranded in the zombie apocalypse and they need to make it home, or to their next destination. The game's going to come with a very large board, or two boards, depending on how they do it. I, in my Kickstarter campaign version, I have two boards, but you're going to be cr traveling across this long board, trying to dodge zombies, manipulating how they're going to be moving against your, your uh, opponents that are also trying to get across the board and of course packing your knife and your handy dandy companion. Everything you saw in the game there is actually going to be replicated in the board game to some extent. Uh, if you can get to the end with killing the most zombies as possible along with completing a lot of your objectives and getting there first, you just might have what it takes to win this game into the dead. Alright, let's go ahead and show you down below what the game looks like and how it is set up. So here's all the components for the game Into the Dead, and as you can see there's quite a bit. There are two boards here which represent the entire board of the game, where players are going to start from one side and try and trek all the way to get to the very end of the board, avoiding all of these zombies that you see here. There's three, four different characters you can see here. We have Barton, Maggie, James, and over there is uh, Helen. And you can play as any of these four characters, and they all have their own unique weapons, along with their own unique companions. Every character is going to get a companion card and these cards are basically going to be things that can help you out throughout the game. They're dogs for the most part, but they're going to come out and you're going to run up and you're try and tag a zombie before the zombie can get to you. Uh, not only that, but you'll also be getting different types of weapons, like this one here is the Bandit T9, and this is the G911 Enforcer. These three, these two weapons are going to have different types of die that you'll be using in the game to roll against the mighty, mighty zombies. There's three types of zombies in the game. You're going to have red zombies, you're going to have these uh, green ones, and then you're going to have the blue ones. And based on the different colors is going to be based on the difficulty. Some of them are very likely to not hit you, while others are very likely to hit you, but some are faster and some are slower. So the slow, uh, big ones that are hard to kill are not going to be as easy to hit you, uh, but the slow, the, but the other ones, the, the ones that spawn all the time, they're crazy and uh, you get many of them, they can bite you if you're close, but it's very unlikely for them to get to you. Uh, you can kill them rather quickly, rather easily. Uh, each character has their own unique player deck, like Barton over here, he's going to have his own unique guns, his own unique uh, companion, and then he's going to get certain things like a tactical knife. This is basically going to count towards if you get bit, you can play this as opposed to getting bit, and you stab the zombie, and in which case it saves your butt. Or tactical grenades. These things blow up in a certain radius based on the types of grenades you're going to get. There's different kinds of grenades, of course, in the game. And then you're going to have weapons, uh, weapon abilities, like a uh, burst shot and a fusillade, as well as movement abilities like run and sprint. You can also play them either on the uh, uh, horizontal or uh, either horizontal face side, you can turn them over basically what I'm saying, they have two sides. The bonfire, place one red zombie on any open supply drop and trigger an event. Speaking of events, events are these little guys here. When you go ahead and draw them, crazy things happen in the game, whether it be spawning five blue zombies, placing a green zombie, zombie on each supply drop, or placing a zombie on each open spawn at the farm. Uh, they can have some good and uh, negative effects for you or your opponents. Supplies, speaking of them, uh, when you're walking across a zombie fest infested terrain, you're going to be dealing with uh, different things, and you're going to be gaining different things, like extended magazines and explosive rounds. When you land on a supply 
supply drop, you're going to be gaining these cards here. To set up the game, it's pretty simple. You're going to choose a number of players. You're going to then give everybody their player board and their character board. You're then going to select a space based on turn order and put your guy right on that space along with his or her companion. We have this set up for two players. Spawn all of the zombies based on their color, and they have them all spaced around the board here. And then players in turn order will also be placing down these little terrain pieces to change the way the game works. Everybody's going to get a turn, and then it's going to go backwards, and everybody's going to get another turn. So that last player going to put down two things. You're going to want to put down one of each different type of thing based on the number of players. And uh, you're also going to get not only bullet dice, but you're going to get some zombie dice, whether it be to how they spawn, how they move, or if they do damage to you, and then while they're walking, which way they walk. After you've spawned zombies at the beginning of the game, you're then going to roll to see if more zombies spawn. This is the zombie master turn, and every player is going to get a chance to be the zombie master every, after every round, it will switch. After that person has spawned and then moved zombies, every player will take a turn, and that turn involves moving two spaces along with playing any cards he or she wishes to play, whether it be using their companion, using a knife, or simply just shooting. Now shooting is always an optional thing you can do, but you can also shoot twice if you use cards in your hand. So after everybody does those basic optional actions along with their main movement, then the next player are going to be the zombie master, spawning more zombies and moving down the board. I think you get the idea though. This is pretty much the idea of the game getting to the very end along with accomplishing your objectives. You're going to start with four and discard one and have three objectives throughout the game, whether it be who has destroyed death, kill two blue zombies with a single weapon attack, or one friend sharpens another, kill a zombie with your companion. It'll tell you their victory points at the bottom here, along with the victory points for uh, destroying zombies. If you can get 19 zombies in the game, you get four victory points. And uh, that's the basic idea of the end of the game. Is if you can get the most victory points and you get to the very end, you win. If somebody gets to the end and you're not there yet, you can still make it to the end, provided you don't die. Normally you respawn if you die, but if one person makes it to the end, it's an all-out war to get to that finish line. Then you get the idea of the game. Let's go ahead and take you down below, and I'll show you a round or so of how you play the game, and then we'll come up and I'll give my review for it. So here we're back to the game. James and Maggie will be our two players. We'll be using the game. We're going to be taking out Barton and Helen. And I went ahead and placed out Maggie over here on one of the player spawns and then her trusty dog Max here along with James and uh, Cairo who's going to be placed over here. All the zombies are situated in their spots and every single player has placed down their uh, cho chosen terrain on the spaces indicated. There's other terrain that will probably be left over but you play with all of them in a four player game. Every player has drawn four and then discarded one of these different um, objectives that she, she or he need to complete. And we set aside the zombie pool and all the dice, including any extra missions, the events that might take place, and if you draw from the supply by getting these little areas here. To begin the game, everybody's just going to move their two spaces here, and um, that would be all they're going to basically be doing for the first phase, but before that happens, it's going to be a zombie master phase. So Maggie can go ahead and start off as the zombie master, and what happens is she is going to take these five dice and roll them. When she rolls them, she's then going to go set aside them just like this. Is probably the way I would recommend it. It shows how many zombies spawn, how many of those zombies move, and then how far they move. So, for instance, you're going to have one red, two blue, and a green. The red will move, uh, will have four move, the blue will have one move, and the green will have one move. And then it tells you, uh, based on the color, how, how far they go or fast. Obviously, red is the slowest, going one, green is going two spaces, and blue is going three. And you're also going to place them on the board here. If all of the colored spaces are filled, because those will be priority, then you're going to place them adjacent to the spaces based on the board you're at. You're just going to be taking these guys here and placing them down on the board, um, and one on each space, obviously, just adjacent. Uh, and I guess we'll go ahead and place all these guys here, just for good measure. And then, of course, you'll be moving them. And as a zombie master, you could choose to move the characters however you want. Um, and you also have to follow this last one here, which is west. So they're usually going to move straight, but when they come to an obstacle, they're going to move east or west based on this. So in this case, he, he or she, zombie, was going to move over uh, to the west this way. It's going to be different every single time you roll the die. Uh, that, was, that was to move my blue one here, three spaces. And then we're going to go ahead and move my green one, two spaces. And then a red one is going to go one space. If they are here, for instance, and it wants us to go west and it's blocked by terrain, they're simply going to get stuck and be impassable. So instead, we'll just move this guy on here onto this little supply drop. 
Then Maggie is now done she, uh, with being the zombie master. She's unable to move her character, her, her main two spaces that she's got to move, as well as if she wants, she can take any card here and utilize it. Now the knife and tactical grenade are probably stuff to save, but she's going to have burst shot, fusillade ammo, spray and pray, and then she's got three movements. You can only play one movement per, uh, per turn, like sprint, which lets you move an extra three hexes, or jog, letting you move one, or run moving two. But you can use any of these that you want. When you use them, they're going to go into your equipment card pile, or your action card pile. Uh, action cards will be gained again once you go past this area of the board here, but equipment cards you're going to find uh, unique ways to get them based on going to the supply drop. Sometimes you'll be able to get them from there, um, as well as cards here. Uh, so basically, uh, that's the idea of the game, moving there. Now your companion will just move behind you, it doesn't really matter where, you just select it somewhere behind you, uh, and they actually have their own unique area of effects as well. Most of them are just simply going to run up and tear apart a zombie and then disappear. It's a good way to uh, stave off from having to deal with certain zombies and whatnot. After it takes their turn, the next zombie master is chosen and he or she is going to roll the dice again and continue. Uh, the last thing regarding the die is, of course, you're going to have these three die here. Uh, these are going to be based on whether the zombies hit you or not. The blue ones are next to you. They might hit you. They got to roll a die here. The green one, so on and so forth. Uh, the red one's obviously the least likely to hit, and the blue's the most likely to hit. And then all of these weapons here are going to have uh, different different uh, numbers on them. So this one here is a purple one, which guarantees a hit almost, but uh, is only one, where other ones will differ. And that's going to be based on the gun you have. And these guns, I'll tell you in which way you fire, they can fire, and what, what types of... Uh, die you're using and how much damage they do and there's also a card that explains what all the zombies um, have regarding life totals and whatnot. You're also going to have these here on the counters, your kill counters to begin the game with and you might be using more of these for other reasons throughout the game. But that's the basic idea of, uh, of the game. If you ever get, uh, if you ever walk next to a zombie, they're simply going to try and bite you unless you use a knife or your companion. If you go onto a space that is uh, in front of zombies, they can't bother with you. They're only going to always be moving this way, just like the game app. And you're always going to be wanting to move this way. So they're basically like not you're still running this way. So if you hit this, you'll have the chance to draw two supplies here or one random uh, equipment card from this stack over here. Uh, these are empty spaces now that could have been placed with terrain, which is where the terrain spaces are. And this space over here, like I said previously, is going to allow you to get your action cards back from the discard pile along with Senior Doggy and trying to get to the end. At the end of the game, if you completed your objectives here along with your uh, kill counter, you're going to add up all your total victory points and whoever has the most is going to be the winner. If you get to the end and uh, and somebody else is left behind, let's say, um, let's go ahead and say that James got to the end here, along with his dog. Uh, but unfortunately, Maggie got eaten over here. She's actually just going to lose instantly and be removed from the game. So you have to try and make it to the end. And uh, it come, becomes a sudden death round when somebody makes it to the end. And the time is now ticking down. And this player won't do anything other than be the zombie master. But I think you get the basic idea of the game. I went ahead and showed you some of these supplies already. There's explosive shots and chainsaws and dog food and all that. And then the events that can happen throughout the game. So that's the basic idea of Into the Dead. All right, let's come up and talk about what I think about the game and I'll give you my review. So Into the Dead, and what do I think about it? Well, first of all, I got to play the mobile app, and I thought that game's a lot of fun. It reminds me of games like Temple Run, where you're going to be basically running across, dodging the zombies, and if you get caught by trying to get to the end of this level, you're going to have to use your knife. If you get caught again, you're out of and you're no, 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 uh, no, no luck for you. Also, you're going to have that dog companion, which can go over there and bite a zombie. It functions very, very similarly in this app, in the app, as it does to the, in this game. So that's really cool and it gives you some different types of weapons and stuff like that that you can gain in the app as well as in this game here. So it really does feel like you're playing the app into the dead. It feels like you're trying to get from one point to another point, avoiding different uh, obstacles and whatnot. What's added to this game is of course multiplayer and you're not playing on a screen. You're going to be attempting to mess with your opponents by pushing all the zombies their way and trying to avoid them by either using your sprints or your runs and all that kind of stuff as well as chainsawing through them. It feels really good hitting zombies zombies in this game because there's hordes of them and there's tons of different ways you can kind of remove them from the game. I love grenades and I love chainsaws. You have this little kill counter tally that goes up as you increase uh, your kill pool and once you get to a certain point you're just going to stop and gain that much victory points. I'd like to even suggest 
more uh, experience gained or victory points gained with these pools here. I mean, for instance, Barton here, uh, you can see his little tracker here that goes to 16. I easily went past that, so I think it would be kind of cool to include more of that. Also, because once you get to the end of the game, it, people can try and get to the end as well, potentially win if they kill enough. Maybe you didn't kill enough at a certain point. Uh, you're also going to have some cool stuff like spray and pray and sprint and whatnot. Things that let you do additional attacks, additional um, ways to outmaneuver zombies, and then you can turn the cards over and do stuff like bonfire, right? Or double tap, where you can make an extra weapon attack that triggers an event. And generally these, these events are not good for somebody. Somebody's going to get hosed in the, uh, in the waking of, of an event. Some of them will help you, some of them will hurt you. We didn't use the other side of those cards all that much because we were too nervous about getting these events after we got a couple of them and they were really nasty. We decided to avoid using them even though we were working uh, competitively against each other because it might backfire on us hardcore. So maybe a way to have events pop regardless of whether people choose to use those or uh, maybe make them even uh, more viable to be one, one, want to take that risk. The missions are cool. I want to find another way to gain, gain more missions throughout the game. I finished my missions halfway, halfway through the game. So so even more would be nice maybe after they go across the board or something like that. Uh, killing three red zombies in a single turn will get you five victory points, and that's pretty difficult to do. Some of these feel a little uh, more difficult for the value they are worth, so I would probably check into uh, making sure that you balance all of these uh, pretty fairly. Some of them are rather easy and you can get some good victory points. Some of them are rather difficult and you can get some good victory points. Uh, try and maybe re change that. I'm sure this is a Kickstarter game, so I'm sure there's going to be some, some changes going on in that perspective. As far as the artworkers, it, it looks great. I mean, you could totally tell this is a, a company that knows how to do design, and knows how to do graphic design, knows how to do illustrations. It, it looks really good. Um, this, I expect this game to look really, really good after uh, it is all said and done from the campaign. This game reminds me of the game uh, the, Re the Refuge, where you're basically trying to get from one side to the other, and it's competitive. It's, it's very, very, very similar in theme and mechanic. But what this one provides is a lot more stuff. Now, I like Refuge. This one kills that game for me. The, this, this one is a Refuge killer. I will only want to play this game from now on comparatively to that one because there's so much more going on in this game. You have different weapons to choose from the way you shoot them, and then you're going to have a lot of different... Uh, events and supplies and equipment, all these things that you can utilize throughout the game, or hordes and hordes and hordes of zombies are coming towards you. Uh, I really like the also the aspect of adding these little terrain tiles, which are going to be blocking the paths and moving around. If you like Refuge, this is an instant buy for you because this is going to be a better version of that game. There's still some things I want to see added or implemented that I want to watch and check out on the Kickstarter campaign, but overall, it's a really cool zombie runner. I really enjoy this game. I think it does an excellent job as far as getting it attached to how the the app is like if you go ahead and check out the app right now you can go ahead and look at the description below and play that if that is seems like uh, what you want on a board game this is going to give you exactly that feel along with a competitive nature where you can play with multiple multiple players overall do check out into the dead a really cool little game for me it was right down the level i'm going to really enjoy this game on very certain occasions where i want to have a little bit of com competitive uh fighting against other players uh because it definitely has that like attacking other players aspect the zombie master can push things in a certain direction if somebody's winning other players might directly have zombies go and mess with that player to the point where it can mess them over you if you die in this game you're 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 in deep duty so <laughs> that's kind of the point though right but if you can get to the end that you're going to be you're going to be doing great and it feels great to get there anyway go ahead and check out the game down below in the description uh on kickstarter right now into the dead I think it's a pretty swell game, and if you're a Refuge fan like I am, you're going to dig. You're going to love this one. Alright guys, thanks for watching another Unfiltered Gamer Kickstarter board game review. If you like watching this video, watch out the rest of our videos here on YouTube. Like, subscribe, and comment. It all, it all does help me greatly appreciate it, as well as checking out the game Into the Dead. Along with the app, I had a lot of fun playing that app, so uh, it's still on my tablet because I still enjoy trying to run through the zombies. I'm not very good at it, but I enjoy it, so I don't know if that sense. Also, go ahead and check out our friends, Everything Board Games and The Giveaway Geek. They got tons of great giveaways. And speaking of giveaways, we're giving away a ton on my site, unfilteredgamer.com. Tons of blog posts, giveaways, Kickstarter lists, and more. Just check it out right over there. It's gonna have everything you want along with that big Kickstarter list showing you all the games currently out. We're giving away four different games right now. Vindication, Wingspan, Feudum, and um, another one, a lot of games. So 
Also, go ahead and if you wouldn't mind, tell me what you think about this new layout. We went ahead and set up a new layout for the uh, studio here, so hopefully you guys like it, hopefully you appreciate uh, the work we put in to make it look a little nicer, a little more presentable. Let me know what you think in the comments down below if we need something added to it or removed from it, and we will definitely take that into consideration. All right, guys, thank you very much, and as always, I look forward to digging into the dead with you next time.